Hey everybody, how are you today? It is day what, 15, 16 of the quarantine, and I hope you are doing well, hope you are healthy. A lot of people have been asking me a question that goes something like, how's this gonna affect the housing market? What's gonna happen to home prices, home values, transactions, all of that kind of stuff. And I've been giving it a lot of thought and I've had a lot of conversations with a, a lot of the bigger minds in the industry um, about this very topic. And then I did some thinking about, um, you know, the history of what we've been through. And I, and I came up with something I, I wanted to share with everybody. Um, you know, I think the cop out answer here is nobody has a crystal ball. We can't see in the future. I mean, that's obvious, right? Um, but we, what we can do is look backwards and we can see what's happened historically. And that might be a good predictor of what may happen going forward. So what I wanted to show you guys is this little chart here, which is the home price index versus stock price index dating back from 1989 going forward. The red line represents the stock price index and the blue line represents a home price index. And this assumes the starting point of, let's call it $100 or $100,000 in 1989 and then how those two values um, started to increase over time. So what you'll notice uh, here, um, firstly, is what we call the, the tech bubble of the late 90s, early 2000s, right? And uh, so, you know, it burst and there was this big crash. Um, but you'll also notice here the, the housing market was kind of dipping off. And this was, a, you know, the, the post-80s little um, influx that was, that was going on. And then we, we started getting a little bit of, you know, kind of slow, moderate growth in the housing market that continued through. Uh, right here, um, the stock market wanted to try to come back in 2001, uh, but then we had 9-11 happen. And of course, that sent things into a downward spiral again. And uh, then you, about late 2002, early 2003, the stock market started to recover again. And what I think is interesting to point out is that the housing market, while post-9-11, post there was a little bit of a flattening. You can barely even see it in this graph, but essentially it just took off going again. Now. This big bump here, this bubble, is the famous housing bubble of 2008. And what you'll notice is that growth curve of the housing bubble started getting a lot steeper than what we've been seeing in previous years. And of course, 2008 happened, home values crashed immensely, the stock market followed suit, crashing immensely. And then we started to get into like a, you know, this little bottom of the trough down here. And then along about 2012, 2013, housing market starts to recover. The stock market recovered much quicker and far more steeply. And so, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the stock market was due for a crash. And with COVID-19 happening and, and what we're experiencing in the world, it, it makes perfect sense that the stock market would crash, not only for that reason, but also because, I mean, look at the immense growth that had taken place in the, you know, the run-up in the years prior. So, um, what I think is worth pointing out that since 2012 to today, the housing market has been on fire, right? But the, the growth, the pricing index didn't go out of control. It was good, normal, moderate pricing growth throughout. And even though people don't necessarily feel that way, they, oh, houses are so overpriced. They're really not. They're just barely above where they were at the height of the market prior to the housing bubble. So how is this going to affect going forward? Look, the reality is, is I think that this is a lot more like 9-11 than it was about 2008, okay? We had some outside factor come in, and it's hurting a lot of people in a lot of different ways. But if you're just talking about housing, yeah, I think we're going to have a little bit of a pause uh, going forward as, as we adjust to what the new normal looks like. Yes, there's going to be a lot of unemployment. There already is a lot of unemployment, and that's going to affect buying power in some regards. But the reality is, is I believe that we're going to push through this and the housing market is going to continue to grow at relatively the same pace it had been growing at. And if anything, the, the gap between the stock market and the housing market is going to come back together like it always historically done. So that's my best bet. Uh, I've been having lots of conversations with a lot of buyers and sellers, both active and thinking about it, and no one is really – you know, fearful. Yeah, they're they're concerned and they're asking questions, but mostly they're it's a life event that's really driving their home sale or the home purchase. And we're not seeing any indications of price fall off at this point. Um, so you know, give us a call, anybody on the team, myself, whoever. We'd love to be able to help you. Uh, you know, get answers to the questions that you're that you're trying to have uh, find answers for. Uh, so that's all I had to say about that. Interestingly enough, uh, and if you wanted serious stuff, you can uh, just close the window now. But if you want to. Check out something I think is funny. Uh, stay tuned. Um, 
I've been doing some research in, in my house, locked in the house with the kids and the wife over the past few days. And it's interestingly enough, there's a, a correlation between what we see here um, and, and what I've discovered. So I have this uh, kid entropy index versus parent patient loss index that looks eerily the same as what we were just looking at. Uh, kid entropy index says is the measure of the chaos that, is, that comes about children throughout, uh, in this case, a given day. And then the parent-patient loss uh, indicates uh, a parent's ability to, or lack thereof, to maintain patience throughout the day. And so you'll know that, notice that early in the morning we're eating breakfast and everybody's pretty happy-go-lucky and things are working. And of course, uh, parents are kind of steadily clicking along and, oh, about lunchtime the, the kids are, are starting to lose it. But, you know, you get a little food in their belly and they, they tend to calm down and, and things kind of start to come back to normal. A little bit of chaos starts to ensue, but if you can get you know the kids down for a nap, that that gives you a similar reset where we can all drop off. But you know from from nap time all over for the rest of the day, it's it's kind of hit or miss, and you know the kids are pretty much steadily going out of control, and the parents' ability to maintain their patience is is pretty much uh, falling apart until you get about bath time. You get a small reprieve. Dinner gives a little bit of a reprieve sometimes, but sometimes not. Bath time maybe thirty minutes of kind of some peace and quiet, uh, but then yeah, you don't get anything until bedtime where we have a steep decline in the child entropy and at this point parents can finally have a drink and, and relax for the evening. So um, like I said, very interesting analysis um, that I've done over, over the past couple of weeks and uh, I thought you might find that interesting as well. All right, hope everyone's doing great.